altitude it occupies, 33 degrees south is designed around the prevailing climate of Sydney, Australia. This coastal city enjoys mild winters, however, as with most of Australia, the summers are long, dry and very hot. Winds follow a predictable pattern of cool easterly ocean breezes in the morning, with hot westerlies from the interior dominating the afternoon. Sydney suburbs are generally filled with poorly designed, uninsulated houses that rely on air conditioning to combat the heat for much of the year. 33 degrees south aims to change this by designing with the climate rather than against it. We achieve this by first reducing overall energy consumption to a bare minimum through use of passive building design concepts, and secondly by meeting the remaining energy demands through on-site solar generated capacity which would be sufficient to achieve and even exceed net zero levels. The majority of Sydney homes are defined by the shape of their gabled roofs. 33 degrees south interprets this form as a singular extruded volume. The repetition of this volume creates an arrangement of three distinct dwellings and a partially enclosed communal outdoor area. Inside, the houses generally follow a simple planning pattern with bedrooms and private spaces on one level and living plus service facilities on the other linked together by a double storey void. Bedrooms face north towards the sun with circulation spaces occupying the southern wall. The exposed timber trusses soften the otherwise modern lines of the interior. The building volumes are composed of masonry materials with a high thermal mass, constructed around an insulated timber frame. These volumes will then be wrapped all over in a waterproof coating of corrugated metal sheeting, which is far better qualified to dissipate heat than more thermally heavy materials such as clay tiles. Atop this is placed a lighter exterior layer of Australian hardwood slats mounted on laminated timber trusses that would act as a ventilated second skin and provide visual impact. High angle summer sun cannot penetrate the exterior skin of horizontal wooden slats which effectively shade the building from undesirable heat loads for half of the year. Low angle winter sun passes through the exterior wooden slats directly onto high thermal mass masonry materials that store away the heat releasing out at night. A well insulated building envelope is then combined with natural ventilation systems to significantly reduce the amount of energy required for heating and cooling the houses. 33 degrees south employs a solar chimney as its main ventilation mechanism. This black metal plated shaft is designed to absorb heat and is well insulated from the main living areas. The chimney is positioned on the northwestern corner of each building where it can receive the most thermal energy. In summer, the chimney becomes superheated, inducing a stack effect which causes hot air to rise up out of the building. This in turn draws pre-cooled fresh air into the house through underground ducts. Operable louvers on the north and south facades allow residents to boost airflow by cross-ventilating the building when necessary. In winter, the solar chimney closes up to become a trombe wall. Air cycling through the shaft heats up before travelling through the rest of the house. When the solar chimney's thermal updraft is unavailable, the ventilation system receives a mechanical boost for air intake. The annually stable ground temperatures help to preheat air during colder months. Solar hot water requires up to 75% less energy to run than conventional electric hot water systems in the Sydney area. A flat plate collector system mounted to the thermal chimney creates a mutually beneficial heat builder. The recessed void created by the wooden slats allows for convenient placement of monocrystalline solar panels between the building trusses, allowing the panels to sit flush within the exterior roof surface. Each truss spacing can support a little over 1 kilowatt peak generating capacity. Across the whole system, almost double the electricity required by residents is generated. Excess energy will be sold back to the grid, helping to pay off the initial investment for the solar system in just a few years.